we're back now talking about the stark divides in the way black and white Americans perceive racism, even as the national dialogue about race intensifies. When it comes to applying for a job, for example, one poll said 67 percent of white Americans believe black applicants have the very same chances. Only 30 percent of black adults agree with that statement. The results of that disconnect and many others is a crisis of inequality that many white Americans still struggle to describe. Amid our national conversation about racism, we decided to start a few local ones. We're doing a big story about race in America. On the streets of Stamford, Connecticut, we asked white Americans some basic questions. What were you taught about how to treat people of a different race? I don't remember conversations at home about race. We, it just didn't happen. You look at the person, not the color of their skin. And sometimes fielded questions of our own. Do you think you've benefited by being white in America? Of course. Do you? Yeah, I do. Okay. There's two sides to every story. And we then showed clips of our interactions to Boston University professor Ibram X. Kendi, the CBS News contributor and author of the bestseller How to Be an Anti-Racist, helped us pick out patterns. How do you define racism? When one person feels th that they're better than another person. What is a racist then? A racist is someone being discriminatory against somebody, against somebody else's race. Were you surprised by those answers? Oh, not in the least bit. Americans are taught that a racist is an evil, horrible, bad person, that it's in someone's bones, that someone literally is a racist. That's their identity. And so that's not me. I'm a good person. Sometimes our conversation started out easy. How do you define racism? Racism is is the unjust treatment of uh, people of a different you know, uh, color, uh, national origin. Uh, that is either uh, from face-to-face uh, -face interaction, but also more importantly, institutionalized. And Yet things could quickly grow uncomfortable. You define racism the way you did. Do you fit in that definition in any way? I'm not. I'm. I. I um, I don't hold those views, and, and you know, nor associate with people who do. Most people struggle to explain racial inequality. So the typical black family in America has much less money than the typical white family. How do you explain that? That's that's tough. Some of it is opportunity. Some of it is what is some of it's your drive, some of it's the way you're brought up. But there's a lot of uh, black people that don't get to where they can get. I don't know what to say about, you know, intelligence-wise, if they're not as intelligent as white people. I mean, there are a lot that are very intelligent. And almost no one used the term racism. I'm confused about when we use the word racism. The term, you're uncomfortable with the term. In some ways, I am, yeah. I think what's striking is racist has almost become like the N-word. It's like the R-word, in which so many Americans think in and of itself it's, it's a bad word to say, when indeed it's a descriptive term. It's a term, Kendi says, that could be applied to just about anyone at times. People can have a racist thought, for example. But that doesn't mean they are racist. Yeah. A racist isn't an identity. It is not who a person is. It's what a person is being. And I think we have to uh, recognize that people hold both racist and anti-racist ideas, and people are deeply contradictory. And in this moment of national reflection, we did find some Americans trying to iron out those contradictions in society and in themselves. I do believe in the systemic racism that we have in America. So as a white person, I would say, of course, I, I probably do play a part in that racism. So, and I mean this in the kindest possible way, I'm right now talking to a racist. Technically, <laughs> although, right, I would never just say I'm racist and I hate people based on the color of their skin. Of course, I would not want to do that. Um, but I also think it's misleading when people say I don't see color 
you have to see color. You have to respect the, the differences. You have to understand different cultures in order to grow out of the racism that you've been taught. So wow. I think there's a lot there, guys. That yes, we can talk there about. is. One thing that leaps out to me is just that, you know, w when you define racism as something between people, you leave out society. And if we leave yeah. out society, we're never going to change it, Gail. Yes, I have to say, Tony, I lost my hearing after that one woman said, well, there are some of them that are intelligent. But what I like, Anthony, is that a white person, white Tony DeCopel, is talking to other white people. Because I think if a black person had tried to do that, it, it makes people even more defensive and they think it's confrontational. Well, these conversations are so important to and have. And it's very important for white people to ask each other these yes, questions right yes. now. It was it's so very, well done. And the whole issue of racism and that word, has white people have a very hard time with it. They and they really don't do. understand yes. it, as Tony pointed out. Yes. Yeah, I, I hate colorblind. Because, of course, you see color. I say color brave or be color conscious, but yeah. I hate colorblind. Yep. It's very well done, Tony DeCoppo. It was indeed.